All praises to Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai, but Hashem Makar Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to talk about in this lesson is how God deals with balance, all right, and how God is is deals with one. If he if he makes one thing, he also make a another, all right. And through understanding this. It allows you to understand God more, understand Yahweh more, understand the Most High more, and therefore, through understanding Him more, it allows you to fear Him more, so that you'll be prepared more likely to do the things that He wants, man. All right, and and not to try and think that it's okay to lie regarding the Scriptures. Now, what I'm gonna go to first, which this wasn't a Scripture planned, but I'm gonna read it anyway. This is Jeremiah chapter nine and verse twenty-three. Does say if Yahweh. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, and even let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Yahweh which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So Yahweh delights if you understand him. When you read the book of Job, right, Job was sick, and he had his friends come, come around him, and they was like speaking, regarding why they think Job was in the position that he was in and all of them were wrong apart from one young man that was was actually right regarding the things that he had happened had happened to Job man right and he he judged he judged the situation righteously as well as Job also was like he didn't understand why it was happening to him also and and them men that judged it wrong had to come and like ask Job for mercy Pretty much, man. So Yahweh doesn't like it if you don't understand him. And I'll read verse 24 again. Jeremiah 9 and 24. But let him that glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Yahweh, which exercise love and kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Now, we're not going to understand Yahweh completely, right? But we can understand him through the portion of knowledge of himself that he's gave us through the scriptures. But we're not going to understand the deep, heavenly things that are of, of Yahweh, especially being being in these weak bodies that we're in right now, man, but we can only know what he gives us to know about him. And on that note, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read and go into the lesson on on how Yahweh deals with balance. So the first scripture that I've got that I'm gonna read is Proverbs chapter eleven. Proverbs chapter eleven and verse one. A false balance is abomination to Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. So Yahweh doesn't like for things to be for, for things to not be balanced. He doesn't like for things to not be balanced, man. And that's even regarding judgment. Now I got another scripture written down. And I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna say, but I know that it's on this topic because you what you can't see on this video is that I've got a piece of paper in a book next to me, and I've got some scriptures written down on this particular on this particular topic, man. I'm going to go into it. This is Sarat chapter 42 and verse 24. All things are double, one against another, and he have made nothing unperfect. So Yahweh deals with things in a balanced way, man. He makes good. He makes evil. Let's go and read that. He makes darkness. He makes light. Let's read it. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. I form the light. And create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So Yahweh deals in, in a balanced way in all things. Let's get some more scriptures on this. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. That's balance right there. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. You plant, you plant seeds and you pluck up the fruit. You plant vegetables and you pluck up the vegetables. This is how it, this is how it works. A time to kill and a time to heal. That's balance also. A time to break down and a time to build up. Again, balance. Verse 4. A time to weep and a time to laugh. It's, it's not good to just be happy all the time. And it's not good to just be sorrowful all the time neither. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Like if you've got a woman or whatever, right? 
it's not good to just be all always always around your woman all the time but it, at the same time it's, it's it's not good to just cast her away and and not be around her either all the time it's a, it's about balance and the scriptures even say be not much over righteous but then it also says be not much over wicked or be not wicked over much roughly paraphrasing that particular portion of the scripture of the scriptures verse 5 a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rent and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak there's certain times when it's not good to be running your mouth but then there's also other times when it's time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace and what we're approaching right now is the time of in the, is a time of war man but then afterwards once esau has been taken out of the earth the time of peace is going to approach now i got another scripture going into how you how it deals with balance and let's see what this one says this is sarat chapter 33 and verse 14 good is set against evil and life against death so is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. And that leads nicely into the topic of Jacob and Esau, which really, when you read the scriptures, there's two. I guess you could say, I'm not trying to make this be a thing that I'm putting out there like it's some kind of um, written thing. But there's really, like, I guess you could look at it in a scriptural way that there's two chosen nations right a nation chosen to receive glory and a nation chosen to receive dishonor and i'm going to explain what i mean when i make this statement so this is romans chapter 9 and verse 11 for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of god according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth so two twins all right they had the same father they had the same mother they had the same grandfather they had the same great grandfather. They had the same lineage all the way up until this point, right? So there was nothing different between them besides Yahweh deciding to make balance be shown among these two these two vessels that he made from one lump, which was Isaac. Verse twelve. It was said unto her that elders shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. That's balance, loving one person and hating another. A time to love and a time to hate. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is that unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Is that not balanced? Verse 19, that will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Neighbour, old man, who art thou who replies against God, shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour, and another unto dishonour? balance all right verse 22 what if god willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath free to destruction that's talking about the edomites who came from the same exact lineage as jacob they had exactly the same that's exactly the same everything up until this particular point where yahweh decided that he wanted to show balance he's but his, his balance rule that he's set in the earth of him not having one thing only one way verse 23 and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which you have afore prepared unto glory balance so when you've got all these people saying that god loves everybody well that can't possibly be true because a false balance is an abomination unto god so him loving everybody would go against himself would go against him having having balance in things now I've got another scripture written down because what these Edomites don't like to accept, right, is that Dave did a lot of wickedness to us. And in, according to balance, right, according to God's God's love for balance, the only way to balance that out is for de de them to suffer 
like how we suffered. This is Numbers 35 and verse 33. So you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for the blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the hand of him that shed it. So if I go around slaying people, right, the only way how the blood that I shed could be cleansed, which I'm not saying I'm doing that, by the way, but I'm just using an example, man. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even do it that way. I'll use, I'll do it again, so like, yeah. If a man goes around shedding blood, right, the only way how the blood that he shed can be cleansed is by his blood being shed. Verse 34, Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein, wherein I dwell, for ye have a dwell among the children of Israel. So people can't try and like, people can't try and say that this thing does not still apply because this thing, this rule has been around since the book of Genesis from the very beginning. This is Genesis chapter nine and verse six: Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. So that that's the rule, man. That's the balance right there. That's the balance right there, man. Now. Going into the balance topic again, let me go into some more, man, like into some more things regarding how God loves balance. Let me go to it. This is first Samuel chapter two and verse six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. That's the Lord showing balance again. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. He maketh poor and maketh rich. You wouldn't understand the beauty of being rich if you didn't understand the harshness of what it's like to be poor. If everyone had exactly the same amount of money, there wouldn't be no way how to, there wouldn't be no differentiation between anything. One, one thing wouldn't be, one, one thing wouldn't be better than another. Just like how you've got some people out there that say that everyone's an Israelite, which is ridiculous. Saying that everyone's an Israelite makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Because Noah had three sons. And Abraham came from Shem. From Shem's line. From Shem's lineage. So what about Noah? So like, what about Japheth and Ham? What about all their descendants, the multitude of them? How can everyone be an Israelite when Jacob had a brother called Esau and he's had descendants and they're still on the earth right now? So how can everyone be an Israelite? It's ridiculous. If everyone was the chosen, there wouldn't be nothing special about being the chosen. And because you have a deal with balance, he made a nation that he loves and a nation that he hates also. Verse 8, first Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8, he bringeth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he shall set the world upon them. And that again goes into how you how he's going to glorify one nation, all right, the vessels of mercy, which have a fall prepared unto glory, right, and how he's going to cast another nation down and show what it looks like if you are hated by him. Verse 9, he keepeth the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. And that's why it's all like it, like I just read in Romans, the ninth chapter, saying so it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that show of mercy. He hardens who he wants, and he has mercy on who he wants to have mercy on also. It's just simple. Now, I made the point about how God's going to glorify and beautify one whole nation and give them everlasting life, which is the Israelites. But then we also have to go and understand the other side of how he's going to completely destroy one nation off the face of the earth. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of, yeah, of, the house of Esau, that was Satan almost said of the house of Yahweh. Esau is definitely not that. Let me read that again. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh have spoken it. So that's the other side. Everlasting life for one nation, all right, and another nation, everlasting destruction and complete extermination, man. That's balance. Now, people might get can get sour and try and say, oh, that's not true. You're saying that the so-called white men can't make it and all of that. But they ain't got a problem when they're saying that the Arabs are the Edomites, though. It's all right for the Arabs to be destroyed off the face of the earth, according to what they're saying. But it's not all right for the so-called, um, you know, for them guys. 
to be exterminated then? How does that make any sense? So it's okay if it's an Arab getting exterminated off the face of the earth, but let it be Esau, Daddy Esau, and then they've all of a sudden got a problem with that if their dad, if their father, who they are of the devil from, is on it, man. These people are hypocrites, man. Or they'll try it, man. I'm not even going to get into that right now. Let me go into another scripture, going into the balance as well, because us, the Israelites, the so-called blacks, as people like to say, we went into slavery. Now, what's balance regarding that? How do you balance that out? How do you balance out putting somebody in slavery? How 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 does that get balanced out? Well, I'm going to read it. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the chip for so like your Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. That's balance right there. That's a beautiful balance right there. You put me in slavery. So guess what? I'm going to put you there. That's balanced. Because if you didn't put me in there, if you didn't put us in there, if you didn't put them in there, you wouldn't have went into it. But the way how to balance it out is for you to go in there. And you can't say, well, that means that when when we, when we you put us in there, that we're going to balance it out by putting you in there because you're not going to get the chance because we ain't going to ever sin again after this point. And the only reason why we sinned anyway and did all of these things is because Yahweh wanted us to learn and go through harsh trials to be the best rulers that this world's ever seen. And again, that's balanced because you Edomites have been the worst rulers that the world's ever seen. The worst, the very worst. Back to more on this balanced topic. This is Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Is that not balance? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Is that not balance? Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So what the saints are waiting for ultimately is for balance, is for justice. Is for us to have re have revenge for the harsh, 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 harsher ease, which ain't a word, but like the harshness. There we go, the harshness of what's happened to us, right? Yet you've got some Israelites that they don't think that Yahweh's ways are equal, and they don't think that Yahweh's ways are balanced. But what does Yahweh say regarding these people? Let's read it. Ezekiel chapter eighteen and verse twenty-nine. Let me highlight this. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 29. Yet the house, yet saith the house of Israel, the way of Yahweh is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Alright, Yahweh's ways equal, man. Yahweh's ways are balanced. It's us as Israelites being wicked, trying to do our own will, that we find that it's not balanced and that things don't get dished out fairly. But when you deal with Yahweh's way, it's always balanced. It's always fair. And who can really, even if Yaha wasn't dealing in a fair way and a balanced way, who could really tell him anything? Nobody. Nobody could say anything anyway. And I'm going to end the lesson there. Yahweh deals with balance. All praises to Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Akar, Kodash, and Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel, Shalawam.